Um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have cr been crucified with the flesh, with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoked, and envying each other. When I read this, um, I want us to think about this while we take communion, that we ask the Lord that we be in the spirit of his love and kindness, joy and kindness, that we take this and we ask the Lord every day to, as we step into our environments, that we act in kindness, that we act in peace and joy, because the Lord is our joy. And we get our strength from the Lord, so when we partake of the communion, that's where we access this. So let's... As we eat of the bread, we bring the Lord into remembrance of his body that was broken for us. And as we partake of the wine, we bring remembrance of his blood that was shared for us. Lord, we thank you that we can partake of you daily, Lord. That every time that we need guidance, that we need peace in ourselves, in our hearts, Lord, we can access you at any time. We thank you, Lord, that your presence is in us and we are saved. We thank you by doing this, we know we are saved, Lord. We thank you for your salvation grace in our lives. But Lord, we also thank you for the dominion grace that every environment that we step into, the, that the people will know that you are there, Lord, because we are your true representations in every environment that we are in, Lord. We thank you that we can access your strength, your joy, your love, and your peace. We just love and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for, uh, for being here this morning. And we just uh, praise the Lord. I have a short message for, um, for us this morning. And it just worked out. It's quite appropriate. Um, uh, the focus is a bit on, on God the Father. And uh, it just worked out that today everyone seems to be celebrating uh, uh, Father's Day. But you know, if you're a father, you, you'd, it's, you're not only a father in one day, you, <laughs> you're a father every day of the, of the year. Um, so my title this morning is The Beginning of Finding Rest. It's a continuation of the of the message that I brought uh, uh, a month ago when Marcel asked me to speak. And um, so Jesus tells us how to find rest. So I'm just going to read this portion. It's in Matthew 11, verses 25 to 27. And it reads, At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babies or to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. And verse 28 reads, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And just repeating a portion of what I what I said in the last message, in regards to verse 25, it says, 
it actually tells us that Jesus, this is how Jesus has qualified the Father. Verse 25 reads, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. But Jesus specifically said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. So he qualifies the Father. So we know he's not talking about any any person. Um, so no one can take that verse and apply it to themselves as a person because this Father that Jesus is talking about here is the Lord of heaven and earth. And just to continue, add to that, when looking at the term Father, not a single person in heaven or earth is qualified to be called Father as a title. For there is only one true and perfect Father from the beginning. And I'll qualify that now. In Luke chapter 3 verse 38 it says, it's, uh, it, it gives us the, the genealogy of Jesus and connects him all the way back to Adam. And now in Luke 3 verse 38 it says, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. And it refers to Adam that we know was the first man. Um, that's what the word Adam means. Man. And here it says, which was the son of God. So God was therefore father right in the beginning. And so the name, however, can and is used for the purpose of function. So we will understand it um, in our cultures, in our in this world, we'll understand it in its function. For those operating in the function of a father or called fathers, and that is usually with a small f, but never as a title. You never, we can never use it as a title. You never, you will never see it being used with a capital F in our environment or in this world, because that position is only de deserving of Father God. So I hope that's, that's provoked some thought and thinking. Um, now, I just want to show you a quick clip. I think this will be uh, quite informative. And this is taken, now this clip is going to show you in the, in the original Hebrew, if you look at their alphabet, their alphabet actually starts with Father, the A and B. But now, I just want to show you this clip. I uh, thought you'd, you'd find it quite interesting, is how Father was actually pronounced in, uh, in Hebrew. Yeah. Abba. Abba. As. As. Okay. Now, what's interesting to note here is that, so it can either be AB or AV, but the V, although it sounds like an S, but in, in our language, it will actually come out more as a B. Um, yeah. uh. There we go. Uh, people don't really, really use AV when referring to their dads directly. For direct use, they would use Abba. Now, fun fact, Av can only can also refer to the Holy Father. So many names that start with AV refer to God, the Heavenly Father. These are names like Abraham, Abigail, Avisha. In English, the V, the v 
turns into a bee to give names like Abraham and Abigail and so on. It's in the Old, Old Testament. So I hope that was a bit interesting, <laughs> the pronunciations, and that's basically the origin of the of the the word father. And it's interesting to see our Hebrew, it's really the beginning of their language is father. Okay, so now the pictorial meaning of Ab or uh, father in, in, uh, in the original in, in Hebrew, you've got the A, which is Aleph. Now in he Hebrew, the, the, the letter is a, is a word. <laughs> um, and the letters are also numbers. So you've got the A, which is Aleph, which actually means ox. It's the picture of an ox. And that is a, it's referred to as being strong leader, first, or God the Father. Those are the pictures that come out from the picture of an ox. So strong leader, first, God the Father. Aleph, that's the A. The B is uh, be it, or bay it. Um, that is tent, house. That's the picture that, that you that uh, is connected to Bayet, and that means house, tent. Jesus emphasizes the importance of uh, Father God and, and, and refers to their relationship as one, Father and Son. It's only after that that he says, come to me. So he's saying, come to me, because I'm going to reveal to you the Father. If we read it in context, that's what he said just before he says, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, so the, the rest is actually found in the Father. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the first rest is given. The second rest we find, it says, and you will find rest. So the first is when we are coming to the kingdom, we are born again. And the second rest is something that in our walk, in our knowing him, our walk of eternal life, the Zoe life, we actually find rest for our souls and bring our souls to rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I want to thank you for, <laughs> I hope that has provoked a, a desire to know the Father, to know Father God. And uh, I know it's not very in, uh, uh, too in-depth, but I've, I believe I've planted a seed that will uh, make you reflect on Father as the preeminent um, pursuit of a person's spiritual walk with the Lord and with Jesus. Thank you. Amen.